Hey folks, one of the common comments that I get uh, from my YouTube is about fear. And it's about going from their current state of working or an individual contributor in their career, going to a position of leadership. Do I retire? Do I change jobs? Do I move cities? You know, so many things that are centered on fear. And we don't like to talk about fear too much, but I wanna hit it head on in this video. Hang with me. Uh, this could be very impactful to you. So regrets and fear is kind of what I'm titling this. What would you do if you weren't afraid? You know, take a moment now to reply in the comments. What would you do if you weren't afraid and afraid of failure may be the, a specific question for you. And most people can go on and on. They're fear, afraid of what society will say. They will be afraid of how they may recover. You know, the devil I know is better than the devil that I don't know. Some of you are familiar with that quote. Would you retire? Would you sell everything and move to Mexico? Um, would you quit your job? Would you become a farmer? You know, what would you do if you were not afraid? For me, you know, you, you know, I retired at 54 and the thought, and this is literally what happened to me, I was thinking forward 10 years to being 64. At the age of 64, what would be my regrets if I continued to work? I was at the top of my career, piling up more money versus the time that I spent, okay? You know, when I look back at my life and think of my big regrets, uh, and these aren't huge, but they are regrets, I never became an Eagle Scout. I was in Boy Scouts, but I never became an Eagle Scout. I was involved in sports and I just kind of, you know, half did everything. Um, you know, this is, you know, teenage years. <laughs> um, you know, I wish I would have studied abroad for college. You know, I had the opportunity at the university I went to, they had a, a, a sister college uh, in England. And I, and I wish I would have done that looking back on it now at the age of 57. And number three, you know, I had the opportunity to get a master's degree in applied behavioral science. I did probably 75% of the work, but I chose to audit the course instead of take the course. My company was paying for it. They gave me the time for it. I had a lot of things going on in my life. You know, had four kids, big job, you know, uh, stresses, but you know, it wouldn't have been that much more effort to get my master's. And those are three of the regrets. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I want to draw to your attention is most regrets of people, pay attention, most regrets of people are things that they did not do. I did not get an Eagle Scout, did not study abroad, I did not get my master's. And they're not things that you did. When I do things and, and take the risk, and if it doesn't work out, you know, I think it's human nature. You kind of say, there's a lesson learned. I learned something that's now part of my history. I move on. I, those dots are connected and made me who I am today. But I don't regret things that I did. They provide learning to me. Regrets are things that you didn't do. So I challenge you to think in, um, in, in your life, what are your regrets and are they things you did or didn't do? Okay, now I've made mistakes. <laughs> and most of the time people don't like talking about their mistakes, but I have made mistakes. And like I said, I've turned those into lessons. You know, let me talk about some risk and some fearful things that I did that I was actually consulted uh, by friends, family, you know, uh, colleagues not to do that ended up working great. Society too. Society says don't do these things. So, you know, uh, and these are in random order, but you know, I was told not to build a, build a house. You know, gosh, that'll destroy your marriage building a house. Too many decisions to be made. My wife and I love building houses. We've built four of them. And I had this so much pride in designing and building a house. Uh, loved it. Um, probably should have put this one first, but you know, we had four children. You know, society doesn't look kindly on four children. It's expensive, uh, you know, and it's it's harder to and harder to get through life when you have a family of six. But I cannot imagine having a smaller family. You know, if anything, you know, uh, probably a regret, regret is we didn't have at least one more. You know. A plant manager career. Boy, why you're an engineer, you're a technical expert, people think you're smart. Why would you go into leadership and plant management? You could be fired in an instant. You get yelled at a lot. You get you know told to, to get results no matter what. Uh, it's a tough life being a location manager. I loved it. I thrived in it. I really enjoyed it. I think I made a difference. Uh, retire at 54. <laughs> 
talk about crazy. You know, at the top of your career, you're still advancing, still making money, and you know, you could have a lot more comfortable retirement if you just worked another five years. Now, you know, I, I retired at 54. Writing a book, you know, <laughs> what you, you know, that's an egotistical thing to do. No, I had a message to get out uh, that uh, there's a lot of pain and suffering in the reliability and maintenance industry. And I don't think it has to be that way. And I've discovered some ways. So what do I, ways to uh, eliminate them and to uh, uh, address reliability in a different manner. So what do I do, sit on that information or do I share that with the world? I haven't made real money on that. Uh, uh, you know, positive money, but not real money, not serious money. Produce a YouTube channel. That's kind of an egotistical thing to do. Again, started off with reliability and maintenance Here's a different way of doing things. Remove some pain and frustration in your plant, uh, in your family life, in your community. Um, you know, just having manufacturing be very viable and vibrant. Um, there's another way. And, and I, I, I talk at national conferences about doing things differently. And that has expanded into, you know, retirement uh, through your questions. Um, you know, how did you retire? What, what's going on in that, you know, Probably 75% of my audience is, is on retirement. But, you know, again, a risky thing I did, so I just listed six risky things I did that I'm super proud of, okay? Uh, that, um, you know, fear would have had me not do any one of those. So back to the original question, what would you do if you were not afraid? Seriously, you're gonna let fear drive your life. What, think 10 years from now, what will you be proud of? And what will you be proud that you just took the conservative route, didn't take any risk, or hey, I started this business. I quit a job I hate, and now I'm doing something I love. Yeah, I have to work five more years, but I love what I'm doing, or I'm starting this part-time job, um, you know, being a farmer, whatever it happens to be. Remember, information trumps fear, so get information to reduce your fears, there's a lot of information on Google, a lot of information on YouTube, a lot of information on uh, uh, in books out there. There's there's mentors and coaches out there. You know, I'm one. So learn from others. Information trumps fear. Don't let fear rule your life. This is Joe Al.